Hello, so we're here at La Gaia Garden with Malcolm Haynes. Hi, hey, Malcolm. How are you? Pretty well, thank you. Good. So, <laughs> what's, um, what's the meaning of La Gaia? La Gaia is um, happiness in Tagalog, but the kind of happiness that comes from a big family and being connected with community. Beautiful. And Jillian is from the Philippines and Marlon was born there, so it's like really appropriate for for what we're trying to do here. We're here in Gawler South. Mm -hmm. How big is your garden? Um, the total block is only about 360 square metres. So the garden out the front is probably a third of that. We've got 60 square metres of actual garden bed area, mm -hmm. but things grow up and over and around and everywhere. So we've probably multiplied that by five at least. Wow, incredible. So, so you've made this tiny space really Tiny useful. and just think upwards. Think crazy, three dimensions, four dimensions, the whole show. How yeah. clever. Shall we go in and have a look? Come and have a look. <laughs> so it feels like we're in a forest here, but you've managed to squeeze chickens into this very small garden. Yeah, chickens are great here. Chickens are essential for a small garden, especially if you want to go organic and stay away from the fertilizers. Mm. And chickens are a forest creature anyway. Tradition, uh, the origins come in the, in the forest in um, in Asia, so they yeah, love this right. kind of dappled light and everything. Because it's quite a small space you've got, but you've managed to give them a really wonderful life. Can you talk us through some of the things you do to ensure they're happy and healthy, even in a small okay. space? Yep. We've only got five. We keep the numbers down so that, you know, they're not crowded in. So they've got about a metre and a half of space each. Mm -hmm. This is all, it's an old aviary that we recreated. Mm. There's an apple tree in the middle, and that just gives oh, wow. dappled light and drops leaves that they can keep picking up. Chickens are good as well, they, they'll eat the coddling moths that affect the apples too because they actually climb up the stem to get to the apples apparently, the, the larvae. And what about the deep litter system you've got going on in okay, there? Okay, deep litter is basically um, just a whole bunch of organic material, it's about as deep as you can go and the chickens just consistently turn it over and they keep picking at things and it keeps them occupied during the day. Mm. Um, this one takes two export size bales of straw to um to fill and then once all of our veggie scraps and things go into the garden here and we get veggie scraps from other people and oh. from some of the local shops yeah that goes into them keeps them happy they keep turning it over like every single day they get some fresh food or? not every day but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i forget <laughs> but they've got a grain feeder in there as well so it's all automated if they want to and same yeah, with the right. watering so they can just pick grains and um whatever they want out of it. Any bugs they find in the garden, mm. which yeah, shouldn't be there, they go in there as well and they just get toasted, just straight into it. And what's the benefit of that deep litter system? Right, it's, um, it breaks down the materials really well mm. and it gets mixed in with the chicken poo and everything that comes out of the chalks and dander and feathers and things. And also, um, it's a thriving biological system it's about this deep and the chickens don't always get to the bottom and mm. there's, there's bugs and insects and microbes and things growing in there. And when you dig it out to put it on the garden as mulch, there's already, you're already adding a whole living, living layer. Right. And then that just sort of tweaks itself and adjusts with the rest of the, rest of the critters in the garden there. And it helps to keep the smell down? It does, yeah. yeah it, right. Just that continual um, breakdown and, and life in the, in the system there keeps the odours down and also yeah controls the moisture it doesn't get too moist doesn't uh -huh. get too wet good for the chickens good for the chickens so yeah. how often would you swap that deep mulch system i do it four over? times a year wow so you don't actually have to be in there cleaning the chicken pen very often no then. no you just clean the nesting box and just you know tidy up in there and that's it that's all i've got to do do that every two weeks but that's where they are at night i guess yeah, the nesting that's where box. They, they, yeah. they, they nest in there and that's where we get the eggs from as well it's a converted old dog house that i <laughs> I made the roof openable and stuck up on stilts so they've got extra space underneath as well. Brilliant. We've got one chicken, she loves to, Yuri, she loves to be underneath things, she loves to hide. So, And then once a month I just let them run amok in the garden and they just go Ah, so you crazy. actually let them out yeah. into the whole garden? Yeah. Uh-huh. In summer, uh, in the really hot weather, uh, every day we'll let them out and they'll find their places to do dust baths and to hide and get them and there's water around the garden for them as well. That's very clever. So they get a, a stretch and a, a change of scenery. So this is a system you've created for your own fertiliser, is that right? Yeah. Can you talk us through what this is? We make liquid fertiliser out of this, um, especially, specifically um, nettles, thistle and comfrey. Mm -hmm. Because when you make those the traditional way by soaking them in water, they really stink. Yeah. They get all <laughs> kinds of problems. So this is an odour-free way of doing it. Okay. 
So essentially, what you do, you have a big pipe. So this is just pipe you can buy from any kind of hardware store or get second hand? Yep. Yep. Yep, anyway, it's just normal PVC pipe. Yep. One over there is made from 90 mil, but it's not quite enough. You need to go at least 100 mil. The larger, yeah. okay. Um, so basically you just pack in, shred and pack in whatever you've got, your, your nettles, your um, comfrey. Could you use weeds as well? You can, yeah, yep. yeah. I use the nettles and comfrey because each one of those has a, a specific um, nutrient in there that we like, like comfrey is full of potassium. Okay. And that triggers flowering and helps fruit set and things. And nettles is just full of everything, so it's just so good, it's a tonic. Stinging nettle, you mean? Stinging nettles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so people shouldn't be pulling that out, poisoning it, they no, should be... No, use it, eat it, <laughs> bathe in it, do everything with it, fantastic <laughs> Bathe stuff. in it. <laughs> so essentially you pack it in there, you have a, um, this is a bottle with some water in and a few rocks, and they just compresses down over a couple of weeks and then have you added water in here no as water well gets added just to, the no. just the plant material just the plant material it's okay. really a super concentrated liquid yeah right and we've got to water it down afterwards and then eventually it'll come out here into the bottle yeah right and shall we see if we can get a a look at some of that we we water that down because it's, it's very strong so dilute it, maybe, yeah. what's the ratio, do you think? I do like 20 to 1. Okay. And then that just goes out on the garden with, um, just from a, a, a sea salt container. Mm -hmm. You just fill it back up again, put it on the hose and spray around the place. Uh -huh. Or a watering can sometimes. <laughs> what's the benefit of using this kind of homemade fertilizer over maybe some of the stuff that you can buy from the shops? It's organic, you know, it's yours, you know, you, you know what's gone into it. And you get that joy of, being part of the whole cycle you know I, I harvested this I made this I fertilized it mm. I fed the plants with it and I ate it you know so it's all the complete around circle around. yeah yeah and obviously that's great for the plant growth what does that do for the soil oh uh, it because it's all natural and a lot of it's actually come from the soil anyway the nutrients are all there and it just feeds the bacteria and the insects in the soil well, mm. that soil life is really important yeah, this feeds the soil microbes and it's a little joke I like to make that we actually just, we farm bacteria here, we farm soil fauna and they do all the work and they feed the plants mm. and then the rest of it is just a bonus. So you keep your soil fertility, you keep your soil organisms happy and everything else takes care of itself. If people have a really small garden or they're just getting started, is that the kind of thing you'd encourage them to focus on yes, more so yes. than the plants, actually the soil, what's focus going on? Focus on the soil first, prepare it, get it ready to absorb water, get it ready, get it alive. I like chop and drop <laughs> composting, that's my yeah. system. Because we don't actually have a compost bin here. Because between this and the bakashi and the worms and the chickens, it's all taken care of, yeah. So for people who might not know, what is Bokashi and how does that work in your system? Okay, Bokashi is a, a fermentation system. They call it a composting system, but it's really a, like a pre-composting system. And you basically put your veggie scraps in an airtight container and add... In the you, kitchen? In the kitchen. It's a small little bin that you can buy. And you add like a layer of veggie scraps and you put some Bokashi liquid, which is a microbe rich um, solution, or the bran, which is a a dry substrate that goes on there which has been inoculated with them mm -hmm. and then you keep adding and adding and adding you compress it because there's no you don't want air in there and it becomes a nice little block there and the bacteria basically ferment the um the veggie scraps so you end up with pickled scraps pickled scraps that's it. <laughs> and the joy of that is they're partially broken down already so the chickens will just go straight into it they love it the um the worms, they eat the bacteria and they, mm. they just get straight into it. It's already already broken down, they have to wait for it to rot a little bit. And you put it in the compost heap if you've got one, it'll just kick that off really quickly. Yeah. Because the, the other microbes just go straight for it, the, the aerobic microbes. And you can just put it in the ground and it'll disappear in a few days right. easily. So is that one of the ways that you manage food waste in your really small garden yeah. where you may not have room for a big compost pile or? That, that's one of the key ways, yeah. Right. Normally we don't have a surplus of stuff. Marlon's really good at cooking with um, 
like uses everything when he cooks and Jelena's traditional from the Philippines and she'll use the whole lot. Wow. So when we pick stuff, you know, we, we only end up with a small little handful of stuff at the end of a meal. Impressive. Coffee grounds, which are a great fertilizer and food scraps from Poetic Justice in Gawla, which is a little coffee shop in, the, in Walker Place there. Oh wow. And that brings in extra from outside to supplement what we've got. So we're closing down part of the waste system out Fantastic. there. Fantastic. So now we're out in your backyard, this looks completely different. What have you got going on out here? This is a totally different take on things. This is where we grow all of our annual plants, the quick turnover ones. Mm -hmm. The front is all perennials, except for what self seeds out there, and then they're left to their own devices. So it's just all paved area here, right? You haven't got any beds here? Nothing under here, nothing. It's all paved. And this is only four metres wide. Mm. Talk me through this aquaponic system. It sounds amazing and it looks great too. <laughs> <laughs> um, this actually started off as one bucket and uh, an aquarium just cycling through, just as an experiment. Mm. But basically we have water is stored in sumps under there, big tank. The pumps from here up through to the beds and into this floating bed here, which is just a piece of styrofoam. We've got fish in there. What sort of fish? Just goldfish at the moment. We've had a couple of die-offs, so we're not sure why. Okay. And um, before I start investing in eating fish, we're going to get the goldfish. Oh wow, well, but that's your end goal that you'd like to be able to grow your own fish here yeah. to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So basically, yeah, that water then comes out from here into the filters yeah. and back out again into the sumps where it's pumped through again. This is a bacteria tank because bacteria in the aquaponics converts the waste from the fish into compounds that the uh, plants can use. Okay, so I, the plants are sitting in water, not soil. How does this actually work? Okay, this lot here is sitting in holes in a styrofoam sheet, uh -huh. which float with their roots in the soil. Got to keep those white butterflies off, it's the mm. only way. <laughs> Cabbage moths. So this is um, grow media. It's a combination of expanded clay balls from hydroponic systems and scoria. The water will fill up to a level here which I've set through this Okay. and then it'll start draining out through a standpipe and then that makes a vacuum under here and then that sucks all the water in the bed right to the bottom out. So you're getting a lot of oxygen to the mm. plant roots as well plus constant moisture so they just go crazy in here. Yeah, they love it. so it grows a lot quicker here than it might in a ground, a bed situation? It grows quicker, definitely, yeah. yeah. Faster. Um, you've, got to, you've got to pay more attention to the nutrients in here, though, a mm -hmm. little bit, because um, you tend to run short of nitrogen and stuff like that. But as you can see from this longevity spinach, a lot of interesting things like it. We've got tomatoes <laughs> down there, kangkong, um, lots of basil. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year, this is our experimental bed, and we've got okra, wow. rhubarb, Thai eggplant, thyme, and more basil. <laughs> we love basil, it's just a useful plant. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible, the, the breadth of things you've got growing in such a small space. I want to add another two beds to it so we can just give that a little bit more, but I need a bigger pump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're running out of water. <laughs> and what, what's going on with these mirrors that you've got on the back there? Well, we... The sun comes through there in the morning in summer and it really bakes out here because it's it's all pavers and cement. Mm. So we have these shade cells that come out, but they block a lot of sunlight to keep the temperature down and the plants still need the light. Right. So I scavenged these mirrors from um, a skip at the uni. <laughs> like hard rubbish, essentially. Always, yeah, they were dumping them. Yeah. And these sort of reflect the fluoros down a bit more. Right. So that goes in the back and that just gives that little extra light boost to everything. And that makes a noticeable difference it for the does, health yeah. of the... It does, Big difference, yeah. Amazing. And especially in winter too. So if someone was thinking about setting up a, a system like this or, you know, maybe something a bit smaller than yeah. this, because this is epic. Oh, this is great. <laughs> it's, it's viral. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know. What would be the easiest way for someone to start this kind of thing? Start with one bed. Start with a floating bed, which is just a tub with a piece of styrofoam on top with some holes in it and mm -hmm. pop your seedlings in there and just keep your nutrients added in there. When that works, then you'll want to go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. Well, thanks, Malcolm. That was so incredible to see all the things you've got growing in this little garden. I actually feel like we've only covered, you know, 10% of what you've got going on here, but you've got a blog, right? We do, thegaiagarden.online. Okay, yeah, and so you cover all sorts of other things, medicinal Everything. herbs and 
energy temperature control everything yep yeah.